Hi everyone, my name is Valerie Friedlander and I'm your host for Motherhood Unlimited, the number one summit for moms who want it all. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this final installment of Motherhood Unlimited. It is our mission to take the limits off motherhood and empower moms to have it all for their own unique and vibrant life. We believe that when moms learn to create where, who, and how they want to be, their happiness and overall life satisfaction increases and they become inspired and inspirational for their children and each other. Today, we are talking about overcoming mom guilt in the kitchen. Our expert is Holly Granger. I invited her to share with you because of her work helping families make eating well fun. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Holly. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I absolutely love the mission that you created and just the entire program has been an amazing, uh, amazing opportunity as a mom to be able to listen to all these other experts. And then of course, to be able to um, share some of my trials and tribulations and what we go through, because I can certainly often say, okay, do as I say, not as I do, because hey, we're all living in that just crazy life. So always just really doing doing the best I can. But I, as a registered dietitian, I certainly have some good points and tips and hopefully can help some parents out there uh, overcome some of that guilt in the kitchen and figure out ways to feed their family healthfully without a lot of added stress or expense. I love it. Yeah, this has actually been one of my big works. So I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you. So before we get going, let me tell everyone a little bit about you. All right. Holly is a nationally recognized lifestyle, culinary, and nutrition expert. She is a dietitian and mom that shares simple, healthy, flavor-packed meals and practical, doable nutrition advice for busy families. The former nutrition editor for CookingLight.com and MyRecipes.com, she has instructed millions of accomplished and aspiring home cooks on how to make simple, healthy, family-friendly meals through online videos, media appearances, speaking engagements, national news segments, online instructional guides, and social media. Her approachable style allows her to authentically advance nutrition and culinary information in a credible and relevant way. Dedicated to helping companies and individuals share their healthy messages through visual communication, Holly has produced and hosted more than 800 online cooking, health, and lifestyle videos. Wow. Holly has been featured in hundreds of uh, television, print, and national radio segments nationwide, including The Dr. Oz Show, The Doctors, NBC's Today Show, and Weekend Today, CBS's The Early Show, Fox News Channel, CNN, The New York Times, Cosmopolitan, MyFitnessPal.com, HGTV.com, SouthernLiving.com, and MSN.com. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to run out of here. here. That's so awesome. I love it. Thanks. And that's only among others. So she is a regular contributor to the Birmingham, Alabama news outlets as well. So, yes. wow. And you can't tell from the accent. You're wondering, what's that Southern accent? Yes. For me. <laughs> yeah, I got the, I got the Southern thing too, but most people can't tell either. So yeah. They're like, oh, Texas? Like, no, Alabama. Alabama. You play it yeah. all a little bit more thick when you need to. Yeah, exactly. When I'm with my friends from, you know, Tennessee, for those who don't know, but uh -huh. absolutely. So let's start off with you telling us a little bit about your journey to taking the limits off motherhood. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, you certainly read the bio and that's, you know, that's, that's that image out here. Yes, this is what we do, but, but that doesn't even halfway explain what I'm doing at home, you know, trying to be a mom and a work from home mom has certainly proved to be quite a journey. I have two little girls, Ellie, who's five and Francis, who is two and a half. And they are certainly my all day, all night, everything. Um, yeah. And of course, my husband, you know, he just sort of plays it. But you know, yeah, I'm with you. There. With boys. I got the exactly. boys. But, exactly. Yeah. But it, um, I really just as a mom and as a working mom have have struggled to find that balance and have had those days where I just want to pull my hair out and or go hide or, you know, drink a whole bottle of wine, whatever it is, you know, we're all that. I know. <laughs> Don't judge. You're cooking with, doing it. cooking with the wine. Just thinking it, cooking. Yes, exactly. Cooking with the good one. Um, but, but certainly it has, it's been a struggle and 
it has been one of those things where I've had to rely on friends and rely on family and just not be afraid to say, Hey guys, I need some help. I am drowning or I call it spinning. I am spinning. And so really taking a step back and trying to figure out, okay, how, what's my perspective? What is my goal? What, you know, what are my priorities? And just slowing down and thinking about that and trying to accept and live through what, what where I am now in my life with two little ones. I know it's not going to be like this forever. So I go through that balance of wanting to just cuddle them up and just like embracing the moment. And at the same time, we've been potty training. So it's like wanting to tear my hair out at the same time. So I've really just had to rely on friends and family, other dietitians, other experts, even if it's, you know, things in the techie world and, and not be afraid to ask for help. And I've really found that in asking for help and in asking other moms for their support, I've been able to, find healthy ways to garner my focus, really figure out what's my role as a mom that I can use to help other mothers. So I, like I was saying, I have my techie moms and I have my potty training moms and I had my breastfeeding moms and, and there's certain friends and family and even people on the internet that ha are going through the same thing and then kind of turn it around and say, okay, I'm using so many other people's talents and resources what's mine that I can give back. And that certainly is taking what I know how to do in the kitchen and also not being afraid to say, all right, we didn't have a single plan meal this week. Everything was fly by the seat of our pants and hey, that's okay. You know, just, just doing what I can, but really being a source for other parents going through the same thing and, and putting my background as a registered dietitian into that to help say, you know what, you're doing just fine. You are, you're making a lunch we'll talk about what goes in it that could be a little bit better, but you're still making it, you know, and just saying, okay, mom or dad, pat yourself on the back for what you're doing. And then how can we come up with those little tweaks to help steer you even more in the right direction? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I absolutely love what you just said about basically building your tribe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Lay to your gifts and your gifts aren't all the gifts, which I definitely, I mean, I think I get into that whole, like, I can do it all, you know, like I can figure it all out. And then, mm -hmm. you know, delegation in that, like one of the big, oh, yeah. in the business world, like, let's take that into mom life, shall we? And mm -hmm. build our tribe with the people who have the skill sets that we can lean on and support each other. Yeah, so certainly. I love that. Thanks so much. Yeah, totally. So all right. So obviously I have asked you here to share your gifts as a dietitian and as somebody who, you know, who knows about dealing with life in the kitchen. And that is an area I, I have a lot of lofty goals in yeah. and it definitely doesn't always look the way I want it to look. So tell us some strategies so that we can, I mean, cause I have days where it's really good and days where it's really not, like you said, but what are some strategies where I can like attain those goals or at least get close to them and then sustain that process? Exactly. Well, there, what I always try to look at is, so we're all on the same page as moms that there's just not enough time. There's only so much time. And so I, I try to think about it where, like you're saying, how can you attain, maintain, and sustain over the long run that health for your whole family. And I think a lot of that comes down to thinking about balance. So as you said, some days are better than others and, and being okay with that and knowing that not every day is going to be your healthiest eating day or not every day is going to be the best meal that you've cooked if you cooked one at all. So I really like to think, okay, where am I? Where's my family on the scale of one to 10? You know, as far as health goes or healthy eating. And I'm not talking about we are all organic, non-GMO, vegan, whatever, you know, I mean, just your basic, hey, we like to eat vegetables or maybe we don't like to eat vegetables, but we're trying to figure out how to work them in. Where do you fall? And then how can you figure out not how to be perfect, not how to be a 10, but if you're a five or a six, how do you become a seven? What are those small attainable steps that you can reach? Because it's all about taking, I would say, like the practical, doable steps. So how do you take something very practical, apply it to your life, make it become habit, make it become routine, and then bump that notch up. And then once you have that, how do you tweak it a little bit more? So instead of trying to 
be everything to everyone and do everything for everyone, which of course, you know, as moms, we want to do that. Totally me. The same. How do you t take a step back and break it down and know that tiny baby steps have a huge effect. And so I look at that and I think, all right, from the standpoint of eating and what we eat, there's some amazing statistics. Um, one from the Institute of, let me make sure I have it right. The Institute of, uh, the American Institute of Cancer Research. Sorry, I'm like, Institute of somebody. Yeah. Uh, then it says, you know, eating just fry, five fruits and vegetables a day reduces the chance of cancer by 20%. That's wow. significant. I mean, when you think about 1.3 million cases of cancer in the U.S. alone are diagnosed each year, by just increasing that fruit and vegetable consumption, it can help to lower the risk. And so that seems like this far out thing, but you've got to take those baby steps now like I was saying, to attain that health so that in the long run you can sustain it. So if you think about fruits and vegetables, there's some very tangible, very practical ways that I'll tell parents, okay, you know, you're not eating any vegetables at all. Your children don't want to eat vegetables. Well, where do you start? Or, hey, I don't have time to cook them. The great thing is there are so many convenience products out there. And parents get so, well, is this GMO? Well, I mean, this isn't organic. I always say, you know what? That can be done later. Let's just start by saying, hey, we're going to eat some fruits and vegetables. And then if you want to go to the next step, great. Let's let's think about that. So whether that's buying the steam bags of vegetables, whether that's spiralizing. You know, we like to have a lot of fun in the kitchen. I have one of those spiralizers making the zucchini noodles or sweet potato noodles. And I love to toss those in some um, olive oil and put them in the oven and roast those. They come out like little curly sweet potato fries. It's just something very, no, it's something very fun and easy. The girls get such a kick out of cranking it and you get these crazy long noodles and it's just something a little bit different. So I work chickpeas. I have a great recipe on my site um, for peanut butter, peanut butter chickpea blondie cups and they taste just like cookies. They're real fudgy and dense, but they use chickpeas. And the girls are none the wiser, and they help me make them. So, I mean, they're dealing with the chickpeas. And if I had put a little plate of chickpeas in a bowl, unfortunately, they probably wouldn't eat it. But if I serve them hummus, or which is made from chickpeas, or if I serve them these peanut butter chickpea blondies, they'll eat it up. And so it's really trying to come up with some other fun and creative ways um, to think about adding in fruits and vegetables. It can be something as easy as, yeah, sure, just serving fruits and vegetables, but children love to dip. So I, I'm one of those that I do a lot of lunch boxes and I put all my lunch boxes on Instagram and I have questions all the time from parents like, I can't believe you're serving them ranch dressing. And I'm like, hey, you know what? A little bit of ranch dressing as a vehicle food to get them to eat their fruits and vegetables or to eat their vegetables, I'm fine with it. So it's really knowing that you may have to take a little bit of concession over here and serve ranch dip to be able to get them to eat their bell peppers and carrots over here. But it really is about finding that balance. And I love to bring them in. We experiment and really look at things that are seasonal. So we went berry picking this summer. And the girls, sometimes if I just put out some berries, they're, I mean, they're funny about everything. And that's, I have picky eaters, which just kills me. You know, I'm like, we should be doing all of this. And I really oh, have to struggle. Booty. What's wrong with you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I really have to struggle through it. But when we went and picked berries, I mean, they couldn't eat them enough. When I've tried to serve my the girls black beans here and there, don't want to touch it, but I invite them in and help me make chili, and they were eating the black beans right out of the strainer and gobbled up their whole bowl of chili. So children are funny, and I and the objectives for this talk, you know, I talk about. I said, you know, we talk about picky eating, and so some of those tips will be worked in. But really, when it comes to helping parents think about that whole overall eating span working in those fruits and vegetables just a little bit every day, even if it's just, like I was saying, five servings. I've made a smoothie with five servings of fruits and vegetables before. I mean, if you think about something as simple as a smoothie or a smoothie bowl, and I've started adding kale or spinach, which for a long time I was like, I don't do green smoothies. And now I'm like, you know what, throw in some blueberries and some cocoa powder and some peanut butter and some banana and dates and avocado, and you're working in all these fruits and vegetables into one easy drink. So it could be and like, and my daughters love it and drink it. So I'm like, you know what, if that's how they're getting their vegetables today, so be it. We can't always eat roasted broccoli or cauliflower at every meal. So really being able to kind of give and take a little bit with that, but just focusing on that produce and on those healthy foods like that and not getting so hung up on 
Is it organic? Is it not? Sure, that's important, but if you're not eating anything, let's start here. We can work to here. Something else I really try to do and really encourage is hydration and drinking water. So even as a parent and as an adult, drinking water is so vital to your organs and the studies that have come out about the health benefits of water on the heart and on the brain. I mean, it's enough to just make you want to sit here and chug all day long. And even with like, you know, de when you're dehydrated, you see all those wrinkles and lines a little bit more. And the more you can stay hydrated, the more it helps with all of that. But especially for children, keeping children hydrated helps with their cognitive function. So if you send a child to school that maybe hasn't had a good breakfast or hasn't had anything to drink that in the morning, they wake up normally dehydrated. So even just offering your child a glass of water in the morning before they go to school or packing them a water bottle for the car ride to school, something as small as that or feeding them water rich foods like oatmeal made with water, milk and strawberries. Um, that can help throughout the entire day. So certainly that breakfast, but then also having that hydration helps with their cognitive function and helps with brain development. So those are just little bitty things that my parents are so stressed out over, oh, I can't get in the, me the kitchen and make these gourmet meals and I'm a failure as a mother and we take out every meal. I'm like, okay, well, I get that. You know, we all work or a lot of us work. Um, if we're not working a job, we're working around the house. I mean, it's whatever it is, it's work, whether you're stay at home or, you know, job or self-employed or whatnot. But it's, okay, you have that big guilt trip over here. So let's just boil it down and, and think about the fruits and vegetables. Think about water. And the third thing I always point out before anything else is breakfast. And like I just said, how do you start your day with something like breakfast? And breakfast is a really great way to work in those fruits and vegetables that people might not think about, but also a really good way to add protein to help kickstart the day. So by hydrating with some water, adding some protein, whether that comes from dairy, whether it comes from eggs, um, whatever source you prefer, maybe even some flaxseed in a smoothie um, or protein powder if you have to go there, whatever works. But starting your day, not just you as an adult, certainly you as an adult, but also your children with fuel is huge in helping with their overall health and especially for children that are in school. So that's kind of where I boil down and whether that's, you know, I, I have some tips to talk about meal planning next, but whether that's, I mean, sometimes the most I can do for meal planning is making overnight oats where it's literally, you can use a cup or a jar or a bowl and oatmeal, milk, water, almond milk, whatever you prefer, you know, maybe some cinnamon, vanilla powder or vanilla extract, some fruit, put it in the refrigerator in the morning, it's ready to go, you're going out the door. You know, we're making scrambled eggs in the microwave, it takes one minute, and making a simple little burrito, that whether you're running out the door or having time to eat at home. Thinking up just some very simple make-ahead ideas like that, and gives you that much more time in the morning when you're running around like a crazy person. Our mornings are always so hectic, and so it's all about grab and go for us a lot of times, and this is with a two and five year old. I mean, we don't even have before school activities yet. I, I talk to friends and neighbors and their children have to be at school at 6.30 for different types of practices, and that's just, that's before the school day. So really hydrating, providing those fruits and, and vegetables when you can, and focusing on breakfast is, is huge for people that have children. And it doesn't have to be a full sit down meal. It can be something as easy as, as overnight oats, or muffins or little egg muffins, whatever that might be. So starting that focus and, and really thinking, okay, like I was saying, where are you on the scale? So maybe you're five or six, How are your, that's where your children are. How do you then take those little bitty tools and tips and tweak them along the way to help, you know, take those baby steps without thinking this whole overwhelming, I have to get into the kitchen and I don't have time and I have to make this massive meals and I'm not a good cook. And, you know, I always hear the different excuses and I make them as well. But when, when I take this few extra minutes to think about it and plan, then it really does make a world of difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, all of that stuff was just fabulous. <laughs> I, mean, I hadn't even thought about like before school stuff. I'm like, Oh my God. And I love the overnight oats. I, when I heard about those, I've totally done those, those and salads in a jar. Salads in a jar. Like, another favorite. Yes. Oh, amazing. And I've been kind of stocking up. I, I got off the overnight oats over the summer. My husband's like, you have lots of 
jars in the fridge because I save the the almond butter jars. Yes. When they're mostly gone. Yeah. That have because I can get the rest of the almond butter out it's with the best, the, yes, right it's the best way to do and it. And he's like, you're you're kind of um piling up. Yeah. In the in the <laughs> fridge. Are you gonna do something? I'm like, yes, yes. Yeah. We're, we're getting into the season for me to do that. Again. Yeah, I know. I know. I I love that. And then the the smoothies. Um, when my first son was. I don't know, like, uh, what the, like one or something, they do the iron tests and we yeah. were told that he was slightly anemic, not a lot, but they prescribed a, um, a vitamin and I looked at it and there were so many extra things in there. And I was like, mm -hmm. can we just try food? Is that, is that cool? And they said, yeah. yeah. So I looked up, there's a smoothie that you could make of, I think it was kale, parsley, bananas, and mangoes. Yeah. Okay, I think that was it. And we blended it up. And he loved it. I mean, at that age. And, yeah, he loved it. and all the teachers are like, what is this weird green stuff you're sending? Like, he loves this. What yeah. is this? And yeah. It's amazing what you can hide in a smoothie. Um, and then they, then, then you start letting them know, like, this is what's in there. And it, it seems like they're starting to open up a little bit more to, oh, well, I eat this here. So maybe in these other places, it's not as it's not as bad, but I would love to hear you share a little bit about just, just touch on it briefly. Cause you mentioned the spiralizer and then we're talking about like blenders and stuff. Mm -hmm. What are like some of your top make it easy, go to gadgets? In gadgets? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I love, um, well, I love my spiralizer and I have two, I have just the one it's, um, it's called a Vegetti. That sounds so bad. It does, doesn't it? What is this conversation about? No. Um, it's like this little white hourglass looking. I, we'll just say it's an accent. Um, and literally, I think it's like $5. You know, and you can use it and hand crank it. But then I did get another one recently. I think it's also that, that has the crank. Because one thing that we love to make, and I have a video coming out soon. Um, this should be out probably... I think mid October or so um, for apple spaghetti. And so what we love to do is we put the apple on the spiralizer and the girls crank and they're always in the kitchen with me, which is, you know, a huge tip for parents to bring them in. We make a horrible mess every time, but it's like, I have the camera strategically positioned so you can't see back there. But if we want to talk about real life, I'll come bring it. It's a disaster and fold it close, whatever. Um, unfolded more like, but we take the apple, spiralize it and it's easier to do the apple with the hand crank. I mean, I know there's a KitchenAid attachment, which makes even more beautiful, you know, noodles or whatever you want to call it, but the hand crank works fine. The girls can handle it. No one's going to get hurt, um, but it makes apple, apple noodles. And so then we have a little fun and, and blend up some strawberries and put that on top and make apple spaghetti. And so I'll, I'll do watermelon balls um, for little meat balls, shave some grated chocolate, on the top for the Parmesan. So it's, it's a big fun recipe in our house that we love to do. So that video will be, if it's not already out, it'll be out soon on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm watching but that. yeah, it's, it's so fun. But so I love the spiralizer. I love um, a microplane grater. That's another one. That's a big one that I use all the time in, in my house. I just moved. And so one of, I have a lot of things I love about my kitchen, a lot of things I don't love, but there are some extra drawers. So I sort of have, Here's my drawer with everything I use all the time, and here's the drawer with all the other stuff, because I've got all kind of fun gadgets. But I love a microplane grater to shave cheese, shave chocolate. I really find the girls and myself, we have a major sweet tooth. And so a lot of times, even if it's some yogurt or a bowl of oatmeal or something that I might, you know, they might be putting up a little bit of resistance to, or I just want to make it something kind of fun, just some grated chocolate over the top. I use, you know, the, probably a teaspoon at the most, makes it covers it, it adds the flavor so that's you know when i'm doing weight loss tips and things like that for the people that just have to have their chocolate just grating some shavings over really helps to extend that chocolate flavor throughout what you're eating and so rather than getting you know the big hunks you still get your chocolate feel so the microplane grater is really fun for that i also love um i have like a little mini food processor and so i'm i do a lot i love onions and so i do a lot with onions but my 
I mean, I just streamed tears. I cannot, I've tried the goggles. I've tried doing it underground in water. I've tried it with a penny in my mouth. I've tried all the tips that they say to do to not cry. And I cannot, I cannot, I cannot do it, not do it. In demos, I always start with pre-chopped onions. I'm sure people are like, all right, this girl has no idea how to chop onions. It's like, I can't, I can't handle it. But that is the perfect little thing to just, chop it right there and any types of foods if you're making a pico or you know some type of salsa or guacamole or whatever it is that it's a little i mean it takes two extra seconds to clean um usually when i clean it i dump out what i have and then add some soap uh dish soap and hot water and just run it a few more times and it it runs around i do the same with the blender and it essentially washes itself so that works really fast but and then of course a blender i have um i have a ninja and really like that one. It blends everything up. I mean, the, you don't see pieces of, of kale or spinach or anything. I mean, you see the teeniest little green specks, but it blends it enough so the girls aren't, you know, picking lettuce out of their teeth. I had another one that I had high hopes for, and it didn't quite blend it the way I wanted. But this ninja that I have is actually really nice. Yeah, I have a ninja too. It's yeah. It's definitely been awesome. It's a good investment. It's yeah. a really good investment. So, I mean, blenders... Blenders are tough. I mean, Vitamix and there's others that are awesome and, and they're a small investment. But when you think about, okay, it's your health and if it's something that can get the job done and it works quick and, you know, whatever, all those benefits, then it's something you use every day. I, I always kind of, it's how I justify expensive jeans. I'm like, well, I'm wearing them every day. You know, it just, every, every little bit pays itself off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is the, the sanity piece and the time piece. I mean, yeah. money. That's, that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to ask what some yeah. of the, the main things that you use are that simplify it for you because it is worth it to me to, to have a few tricks to one, help my family eat well and to um, just keep it simple so that I'm not stressing out because I, I love what you're saying about the, you know, the scaling, um, mm -hmm. how well you're eating and stuff. Cause I actually find that if I'm feeding my kids at like a five, I'm probably feeding myself at a four. Oh, um, easy. I just, I, if not a three, just because I'm so focused on taking care of them. Like we're hardwired to take care of our kids. Yeah. And then I, it's so, the self-care piece is so easy to forget. And I'm one of those people that I get caught up in stuff. I forget to eat. Oh, is oh so yeah. Good. Or if I forget, to, I mean, it's not even that I forget to eat, but it's like, oh, or yeah, that, or it's like, oh, I'm starving. And I stop in a gas station and grab a, bar of some sort that's not filling it's filled with crazy stuff and I'm like this was so silly I pack lunches for the girls every day and I had to laugh this morning I like yesterday my husband we've been talking about you know him getting healthier us all eating healthier I mean this is a constant struggle even this is what I do all the time and as a dietitian but it's it's real life I mean it's a constant struggle for me for him for the family and so we had we had done some meal prep amazingly uh yesterday and we we had groceries on hand amazing you know it doesn't always happen like that on a sunday when we're trying to get ready for the week but i asked myself do you want me to pack you a lunch box because normally he always says i want to get out of the office i need to walk around but then what's around his office to eat is not healthy you know it's like his options are hot dogs or hot dogs you know it's just nothing good so i was like are you sure you're not in chicago box. oh yeah so <laughs> i posted it on i posted it on my instagram page because he told me, he was like, I'm not taking a lunchbox. Because I love, like, um, Bentgo or Planet Box or Yum Box, all the little divided containers. So I was like, well, I'll give you the Planet Box because it's just sleek and metal, you know. He was like, I'm not taking that. Of course, of course I packed it, you know, whatever, get over yourself. So I, um, and he took it and he was laughing because I had said on Instagram, like, now the big question is whether he's going to take it. So this morning when I gave it to him, he was laughing and I put some snacks in there and he was just fine. But then... You know, it's lunchtime right around now, and I don't know what I'm going to eat for lunch. The girls have lunch. My husband has lunch, but I forgot myself, you know, and so now I'll probably, because, you know, once we finish, run and go get carpool and everything else, grab something quick and be out. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Time to eat. Anyway, so tell us more about, about actually planning to feed ourselves. And yes. our well, certainly. I mean, that's the one thing. Don't leave yourself out. Cons remember yourself when you're planning for your family, whether that's packing a lunchbox, making a meal, whatever it is. And really, it's I'm the worst. I'll be so honest. I am the worst at saying, let me take an hour out of my week, not even day, week, and come up with 
a meal plan for the week. And it doesn't even have to be like, we are going to have this with this and this garnish. La, la, la. I'm just talking about Taco Tuesday, Daddy Plan Wednesday, you know, Take Out Thursday. Yeah, I know. I have a friend who every Wednesday, uh, Dad's in charge and he can make whatever he wants. And so I told Brent, my husband, I was like, I think we need to start instilling that Daddy Dinner Wednesday or whatever night of the week you choose. And he was like, okay. And I'm like, yeah, it's team effort, team effort. And so we, I think that's our plan um, for the fall moving forward. Cause I told him, you know, as a working mom and parent and I'm running carpool and I'm also running to activities and everything else. It really is difficult to figure out, okay, when are we going to eat and what are we going to eat? So a lot of that could be spared with just a small amount of planning. I love, and one thing I've been doing a lot lately is using a slow cooker. You were asking about my favorite tools and gadgets. I love the slow cooker and really just a small amount of time in the morning or even the day before, that night before to prep it and turn it on. There's nothing more satisfying than coming home after running around to games or dance or whatever it is and the house filled with this wonderful aroma and your dinner's right there and it's and ready to go and you're like, did I hire someone? Like, what happened? So I've been doing whole chickens in the slow cooker a lot lately. It saves so much money and they're absolutely delicious. I'll just take a whole chicken and easy, rub it down with some salt and pepper and onion powder, cook it on low for about four to five hours and it's done and it makes this yummy broth. You can just kind of strain the fat or whatever and delicious. But then you have all that chicken for a meal so you can eat it as, on its own. Or if you, with a little bit of plan, you can think ahead and think, okay, let's cook this chicken or maybe you cook two chickens. I like batch cooking when possible. So you cook something once and then eat it multiple times. So whether that's chicken, whether it's a flank steak, whether it's, you know, whatever it is that you think ahead and you know, well, I've, I've made this chicken, I've grilled this chicken or cooked it in a slow cooker. What else can I do with it? So tonight we're going to eat it this way, but tomorrow we're going to have tacos and this is already done. And yesterday I made salsa and I have all my tomatoes already chopped or I have a little food processor so I can just assemble this really quick. So with just a little bit of strategic thinking and planning, it really is doable and attainable. It's just getting into the habit of doing it. And, and honestly, that's, that's where I fail because it, I kind of think, okay, on Monday and Tuesday, I'm going to make this and this, and then I kind of stop there. And so whether that's just your start, maybe you don't even think about dinners. Maybe all your plan is, is you want to focus on making sure your family is hungry in the morning and they're not that hungry in the evening. That's what I find with my children. They will eat anything in the morning, but by the time we get to dinner, they've had, you know, they had their breakfast, they've had lunch, they've had snacks and they're not as hungry at dinner. So I really try to push a lot of nutrition in the morning. So for me, sometimes it's planning, what are we going to eat in the morning? How do we make the smoothie packs to keep in the freezer? So instead of having to chop and think through what ingredients go in smoothie, they're already in these little bitty baggies and I just dump them in the blender, add a little bit of milk and give it a whirl and we're ready to go. So some little easy things like that, just a little bit of extra planning. And then that also helps with grocery shopping which when you know why you're going to the grocery store to buy what you need, you can look for coupons, you can look for deals. And even if you don't do any of that, you just go and buy what you need. You're saving on food waste versus buying things that you may not end up cooking and then go bad. And it helps you to save from picking up all that extra food that you might not end up eating or wanting and then spending a lot of extra money. So taking just a small amount of time, that really is one of the key tips in and eating healthy is taking just a little bit of time ahead to plan and make sure you have those foods stocked. And so, like I said, whether that's cooking in bulk, whatever that is, whatever your strategy is, or just knowing every Tuesday we're going to have tacos and that's okay if it repeats every Tuesday for a year, you don't have to think about it. So I'm all about not recreating the wheel. And, and certainly when we have a meal that's a hit or if I do something that the girls are like, this was yummy. I'm like, write it down. You know, I have kind of a notes thing on my phone where I write it down because they change their mind all the time. And I feel like I'm constantly reviewing what do they like to eat? Because as choosier eaters, and as my five-year-old likes to express her opinion about certain foods and the two and a half year old just does whatever she does, you know, I might make this beautiful meal. And I, so I tell Brown, I'm like, I'm, I'll take the time. I'll stop working and make the meal or whatever it is. And then the girls decide, they don't like it, you know, or 
Brent went to lunch with his coworkers and he's not hungry or whatever it is, we're all off kilter and it kind of goes out the window. And so it's hard to get, it's easy to get frustrated and hard to get remotivated. So having a game plan, knowing, okay, we have dance or gymnastics or something on Wednesdays and trying to think I'm going to make a really nice sit down dinner on this night. It's just not going to happen. So that's why it's like, think practically and think, okay, well then what's a better option? Maybe it's getting takeout. Maybe it's using a meal planning service that sends the meals in the box right to you, whatever it is. You know, I always say, don't be afraid to take shortcuts because sometimes shortcuts equal sanity. And to me, that sanity is worth the price of convenience when it has to. There's a lot of things that you buy as a convenience product and it costs a little bit extra. And when I have to take those concessions, I do. And when it's easier for me to buy a big bag of carrots in bulk and we have a peeling party because the girls love to peel carrots, we peel them all and we have all of our carrots for the week. I cut corners that way and do it too. So it's all about finding that balance. But just that little bit of planning. And the one thing that I'm excited about for the people that are watching is that I've created a weekly meals, a, a one week of meals. So that includes all of the meals and it really takes into account um, using leftovers, making things more than once or twice. And so what I'm also offering along with that is just a quick video where I go in and explain it. I mean, it's very low key. It's not, it's, it's just, Hey, this is, this is my kitchen and this is how I do it. But sometimes I think it helps just seeing how other people's, the, the, what their process is. And that's something that I've learned from a lot of my dietitian friends that are, and other mom friends that are excellent meal planners is it's like, okay, how are you, do we have to have a chicken, a fish, a beef, a meatless? I mean, or can we have chicken three nights in a row and it's okay? And to that I say, chicken three nights in a row. If that's what your children eat, go for it. For my picky girls, I always make, what I call a yes list and I'm always updating it and they don't know I have this list because I don't want them. I try not to tell them y'all are choosy eaters or picky eaters because then they put on that hat and they embrace it. You know, I want, we talk about all different foods and we try different foods and smell it and sometimes they eat it and sometimes they chew it up and spit it out, you know? So just having them interact with the foods is key. But I always try to think through what's something on the table whether it's just a bowl of strawberries that they will eat so that when we all sit down together, that's something that's crucial and huge to me when possible to sit down for this family meals, whether it's dinner or if it's breakfast, we eat a lot of breakfast together because um, we don't all, we can always do dinner, but what are those foods that they like to eat? What's that? Yes. Food and come up with some meals around that. So I keep using chicken because we're all on a chicken kick. We're on a chicken and deli turkey kick right now. Cucumbers, hummus. Like I could make the list of the only things they want to eat right now. So I take that, find different ways to serve it, and then start supplementing in new foods so that I'm constantly introducing and they're constantly exposed. Because for kids, parents do, but for kids it's all about the exposure. So the more you can expose them to foods that they may or may not like, the better off you're gonna be. And really using a meal plan to do that is one simple way to say, okay, you know, let's try dragon fruit tonight and have fun with that, or you know, whatever it is, it, or if it's even just, watermelon you know something easy but thinking about what they have what they like what you want to try and just taking doesn't even take an hour I mean it's something you can sketch out on paper it doesn't have to be formal but just thinking through it really does make such a difference absolutely that makes a lot of sense just the just having that plan and and preparing and I always think about like the um my go-to things and then my new things so like yeah got, I've got my go-to things. So say a day goes crazy and I need to just make something fast. Yeah. I have a couple go-to things that I can do quickly that are pretty simple. And then I have my things that like, all right, I really want to, to create something, mm -hmm. new, new things, or, you know, have a little time. I have on this day, I have a little bit more time, but I absolutely adore my slow cooker, my yeah. slow cooker and my hand blender. My, uh, yes, like an immersion blender. Especially because we're cutting, yeah, the immersion blender. Yeah. We're coming up on like the winter months, split pea soup, squash soup. I'm all mm -hmm. like cook it in the, the, um, slow cooker. Take yeah. my immersion blender. Well, it makes it so creamy without adding a lot of extra fat or anything else. And that soup is soup and dips, but soup is one of the top ways I can get the girls to eat vegetables. I mean, yeah. they are 
They are into soup. So we do, we do a lot of soups. I love it. And, and I'll make big batches and freeze it. And that's, I mean, sometimes if it's just one of those weeks, knowing, and that's part of your plan, it's just knowing, okay, in the freezer, I have four chicken breasts that are already cooked. I just need to move them over to the fridge. They can defrost, you know, throughout the day. I roast some vegetables ahead, or we're going to use a throw it, you know, 90 second Uncle Ben's rice and whole, whole grain rice or whatever it is, brown rice, and have it with this and some fresh fruit and done. So simple, 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 simple is key. Now, if I can just have someone come in and clean all it up for me, you know, that's, that's the next trick. Yeah. yeah. Well, my husband and I trade. Like, that's, if I, I think that's a good way to do it. Actually, he has a big thing about like the dishwasher being put together the way he wants it. So that's yeah. his deal. And I'll do some dishes if he's cooking and vice versa. Yeah off but yeah so we are we're like way at our time so yeah, it's all right sorry I'm a talker oh, no no it's great it's great I mean it was so full of of awesome stuff for everyone so and for me so um just to recap really quick what are like two three things you would love our audience to take away from this interview okay well I would certainly say number one is to just step away from the guilt you you can't do it all you can't be it all i can't do it all or be it all at, in the kitchen and everywhere else so find and this i'm saying this to the parents and you're telling me to break it down or to the moms find what it is you want to focus on one thing you can always whether that's your meal plan maybe you just say this week i'm going to plan three dinners and it doesn't have to be elaborate it can just be chicken parmesan but find what that plan is make that plan and figure out what that is or you say this week I'm going to focus on breakfast and we are going to have something for breakfast that has some protein and fiber in it, but pick out one thing and just remember it's all about small steps. You know, the kitchen is a very daunting and overwhelming place, but it certainly doesn't have to be. I mean, I have, I have my friends that love it and live in there and I have my other friends that don't want to step foot in without, you know, just being totally terrified. So I would say, embrace it with small steps and then certainly bring your children into the kitchen that's the best thing you can do even at a tiny age is bring them in let them help so whether that's washing beans in the colander letting them if they're old enough you know grate some carrots chop corn those are all things my girls love to do and i found that the more they can interact with the food and interact with the meal plan whether that's a lunchbox saying you want turkey or ham do you want strawberries or watermelon whatever it is giving them that ownership it gives them so much more authority and confidence in themselves in their food decisions so bringing them in and involving them and making it a family affair so it, it can turn into something fun but just really bringing those kids in and and taking some of the pressure off not being afraid to ask for help and not being afraid to use the convenience products when you have to they're there for that reason so many different services that can help so it's all about just taking that step back and taking a deep breath <sighs> I know. I'm thinking about dinner right I, now. I, 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 was I, was like, I was like, oh, yeah, it is. It's just taking that space. So thank you so Absolutely. much for being here. And you touched on it, but why don't you, you remind us again just real quick about the free gift that you have. Yes. For- well, I am so excited to connect with everyone watching this, too, and, and that have been involved in the, the program and the summit all the way through. But I have a one-week meal plan that hopefully will be a jump start. And you know, so you can certainly edit as needed. And then just a short, very simple homemade video of me in my kitchen. And we're not, no fancy lights, no fancy drama, but just, it is what it is. Here's how I think through how I plan my meals. And here's how I, how I thought through the meal plan that, that they'll be receiving um, as part of the free gift. And then we'll go from there. There's lots of recipes and fun, um, different incentives that I offer on the site and on my social media channels all the time. So I'm excited to connect with the audience watching today. And I'm always available. I always answer questions um, that come in through the website or that come in through Facebook. So certainly if anyone has any questions or follow up after this and they want to get in touch, I always say, you know, feel free to contact me. I, I try as hard as I can, as fast as I can to respond. Awesome. Thank you so much. And as a reminder to everyone, the email that you were sent to access this video will also connect you to the link to access Holly's free gift. Yes. So, thank you so much again, Holly. For oh, me. so fun. <laughs> it was awesome. So, and thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been an amazing, amazing experience. And I hope that you've taken away 
as much as I have. It's been awesome having you here with us and stay tuned because in the next couple of days, you are going to be getting an email to give you access to all of the interviews for a limited amount of time. So if you missed any, you can catch them now. So keep your eye on your inbox for that. And thank you so much for joining us. It has been an absolute pleasure to be here with you all and to share these amazing experts with you. So I hope to see you soon. All yeah. right. Bye. Bye.